Okay, here we are trying to uh, figure out the best beam and joist configuration here for the shed. And here's what I'm considering. I'm considering using two types of load carrying beams. A uh, flush beam, one flush beam on the far, watch my finger here, right there, I'm just touching right there, boom, that flush beam. That would be the flush beam, and then the rest of the beams would be what they call cantilever beams, which is, let me touch this with my finger, boom, that one right there, the one closer to us, um, that would actually go under the joist. So, again, so this is the joist, right here, pressure treated 2 by 8 and then here for this first cantilever beam this is pressure treated 2 by 10 right here and this is a pressure treated yellow lab <laughs> helping me out my best buddy right Sammy? whoops we just knocked that beam over okay but anyway the way this beam was excuse me Sammy get out of the way excuse me okay the way this beam was set up before she accidentally bumped it over was kind of like kind of like this okay so we're making contact here at that joint so the beam is fairly level at this position and uh, here's our level to prove it we need to come up just a tad, tad bit, but we're we're pretty darn level there, which basically means that down as that that two by ten beam runs towards the shed, we have to dig that down into the ground just a teeny bit, maybe even maybe just an inch. But I'm thinking we pour a concrete pier down at that end just to pour that into the beam, and of course just imagine the henway there gone, that little gangplank access going in, and this this beam that we're talking about will probably go that way a little bit more. Maybe we'll put it um, strategically in a position that will optimize the uh, load carrying capabilities. Anyway, I'll turn that down. So so basically what I'm, what I'm suggesting is we use these 2 by 10 beams. They'll be double beams sandwiched together. But here's our first one. This is what they call the flush beam call it the flush beam because our 2 by 8 joists are actually going to hit flush here and then we'll put joist hangers on them to uh, support them and hardware so basically uh, this end will probably be the weakest part of the, the deck the, um, the north side of it this will be supported only by fasteners for the most part but we'll put you know piers we've already got the two posts down there taken care of so I'll need to put a supporting pier here and something here so that we don't have to share the shed foundation. I'd rather make it uh, autonomous, make the deck foundation autonomous from the shed. So we could do that. This is one idea. Okay, so you can see the joist will run this direction, north-south. And what we'll do is we've got the one flush beam there this will be a cantilever beam running underneath and then we'll do one more beam out here where we already have some of our our footings poured and that can be uh, assuming our elevations work out that could be a cantilever beam as well with the, the joist resting actually on top of that beam alright that's our thought what do you think Sammy? Think that might work? Yes, I think so, Daddy. Over and out. <laughs> we love you. Bye, Sammy.